Alright all, like the title suggests, in today's video we're going to be taking a look and see if the Wraith Stealth is good enough CPU cooler to be overclocking your Ryzen 5 3600. What's brought this about, if you haven't seen the build video, I got, I'll put a link up here for you, of how to build a $900 all AMD gaming and streaming computer here in 2020. Well, I went to do an overclocking video on this motherboard to see how good I could overclock the Ryzen 3600 on the motherboard. Well, whenever I started writing my initial test on this running out of stock settings, I found some curiosities and it kind of piqued my interest. So instead of doing an overclocking video or how to overclock, this video came about. And it's mainly because of the stock heat sink on the 3600. Let me run down the ports that make up this system for you. Of course you have the Ryzen 5 3600. I'm going to be using the Wraith Stealth Cooler and the Hyper T4 Cooler. We have the Asus Prime B550M-AY5 motherboard. We have G-Skills Ripjaws 5 16 gigs running 3600 MHz RAM DDR4 RAM. We have the Gigabyte Radeon RX 5600 XT Windforce OC cord. We have a Silicon Power Ace a55 two and a half inch SATA 512 gigabyte for the storage on it. To power everything, we have the EVGA 500BR100. It's an 80 plus bronze certified non modular power supply. In the house, of everything we have the Fractal Design Massified C Mini, which I did add an extra intake fan to this case. So you have two 120 intakes and a 120 exhaust on this, which that stayed the same within both tests. The only thing different that I did was I changed out the air cooler and the RAM is running at the 3600 MHz speed so I did overclock the RAM with the XMP or the DOCP which this motherboard calls it so it's running at the 3600 MHz everything else is running at stock so let me show you the footage of what kind of what kind of temperatures I got with the stock heat sink and then I'll show you the temperatures with the Hyper T4 and then I'll be back with the conclusion to the video Let's get CPU hardware monitor booted up here so we see what the systems are doing. Alright, we'll get that set up over here. Alright, uh, if you guys don't know, um, this is the voltage for the Ryzen 3600. This is the voltage. This is for the whole CPU. This is for each individual core. Okay, this is the temperature package. You know, the max has been 58, the minimum is 34. The value right now is balanced between 34 and 35. This power consumption, which I'm not too interested in that for this video. The current, which ain't too important. Um, the CPU utilization, that's one thing we're going to keep an eye on. This will be 100% on all cores and all threads. And the clock speeds we want to keep an eye on during this test. Alright, and of course, if you guys know anything about stress testing a system, you need to run a program that's going to really tax the system. And what I use to do this is a little program called Prime95. Right, here we go. And we just want to do just a stress test. I do the blend. It's all the above. So it does the RAM and the CPU both. So uh, let's click the OK button and we'll get all 12 workers working. And as you can see, it's actually doing its thing. You know, the CPU is at 100% max. It's running about one, uh, 4 gigahertz, 4.1 gigahertz. You know, um, it's just doing pretty good right now. And as you can tell by the clock down here, it's uh, 11.03. Um, the temperature package, the max is 67. It's running at 67 right there. The minimum was 34. But the strange thing is, within about 10 minutes or so, this number right here, which is the value it's running out now, and the max is going to get up so high to where it starts cutting back on the speed of the processor. And you'll see this, you know, um, it will cut back from 4.0 all the way back to 3.7, 3.8, and it's because it's hitting max temperatures. So I'm going to show you about 10 minutes of this, 15 minutes of it, and uh, show you what I'm talking about here. Okay guys, it's been about 10 minutes here, and there's a few things I'd like to point out at this point. 
it's hit, it's hit 94 C. The max is 94. Okay, and these things are usually around 95 degrees. They start thermal throttle. You look at the volts now. It's down to like 1.1, 1 1.15, 1 1.13, 1 and so on. When it first started, they was hitting up to 1.35. As you can tell on the clock speeds, it's down clocking itself already at 94 degrees. It was hitting up to 4.192 uh, 4 gigahertz. And now it's settling with 3.8, 3.7 gigahertz. And it's doing this, it's dropped the voltage because of the temperatures to try to keep it under check. But you still ain't getting the max performance out of this, uh, out of your process because it should be hitting that 4.192. So it's actually compensating for itself, which is a good thing. I mean, the board ain't going to let you burn up your CPU. But still yet, it ain't a good thing because it's cutting down the performance of it. Now, is this the motherboard? Is it the CPU? Is it the stock heat sink? And of course, the easy fix for this would be just to get you an aftermarket heat sink for your... Uh, CPU, which should bring these temperatures down. Well, we're going to try that and uh, we're going to see what happens here. Let me stop the test and exit the test and uh, let this thing cool down. And uh, I'll be back and tell you what I did to the system and uh, if it actually improved it much. Alright, guys, and here we are back. It's been eh, about an hour or so, I guess. But uh, I took off the stock heat sink cooler and I put on the Hyper T4. And we're going to see, going to do the same thing we did last time. We're going to give it about 10 15 minutes and uh, see if we can get a little bit better performance since we swapped out that, changed out the aftermarket heat sink here. Which I think is going to make a big difference. But we will see. Downloads, Prime 95 application, and go. And you can tell by the clock, it is now 11.57. So we'll give this about 10 minutes or so, and we'll come back and see what the temperatures look like. And see if that aftermarket cooler can actually keep up the performance of the processor while keeping the temperatures down. But time will tell. I will be back in about 10 minutes. Alright guys, it's been about 10 minutes now. I was off on my math before. We started about 11.57, now it's 12, 12.07, so it's been about 10 minutes, just like we did with the stock heat sink. And as you can see, the volts have still dropped down to 1.1 something, 1.9, 1.7, 1 1.6. But look at the temperatures, you know, right now we're running at 81C. The max is 83C. The minimum is 37C. But that 83C tells me that there's a little bit of headroom in here now with the Hyper T4 cooler at least for a little bit of overclocking. As you can tell the test is still running, everything's at 100%. Our clock speed is up by a little bit compared to the last time. It was down to like 3.8 or 3800 megahertz. And now they're still reaching up close to the 39 bouncing from the high 3.8s up into the 3.9s. So we're getting a little bit better performance out of the Hyper T4. And that's mainly because of the temperatures is in check and we ain't hitting that 93, 94 degrees. Um, but let me get the test stopped here and everything, get this thing cooled back down and uh, I'll be back with my conclusions to the video. All right, all. After watching them clips and seeing them temperatures and what they're set at, I don't think you could actually do much overclocking with the stock heat sink that comes with the 3600. And about my testing and the way I did it here today, I know there's going to be some complaints about it. Some people are going to say the 10 minutes ain't long enough. Some people ain't going to like Prime 95. Some people ain't going to like hardware monitor. Okay, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but this is the way I tested it. I can hear another one already coming up in the comments. Nobody ever runs a system at 100% usage like this. In most cases, you're right. There is some cases if you get too much of a, if your GPU is too powerful for your CPU and you're running a lower resolution like 1080p or something like that, you could be pushing that processor to 100% usage. Can you run your system with the stock heat sink? Yes, you can. But I would keep an eye on them temperatures and make sure you ain't utilizing your processor at 100%. If you're getting into video editing or something like that, rendering out videos, 
it may push this processor all the way to 100%. If you get into streaming and you're using the 264 encoder, that's another good reason why you may be pushing your processor to close to 100%. So, you know, then this is about the overclocking side of it. So with them temperatures hitting that threshold that quick at 100% usage, you know, there ain't no over, there ain't no headroom there for overclocking. You know, even with a $25 or $30 aftermarket heatsink like I used here, the Hyper T4, I see in 10 to 11 degrees decrease in my temperature after 10 minutes. That's another reason why I did 10 minutes, because I really didn't want it to start throttling back or whatever. I've actually ran it off camera for longer than 10 minutes, but it never reached over 94 degrees. But I do believe if you're going to be, if you want to get into overclocking, you want to dabble around with overclocking, I think you need to do a little bit better than the stock heat sink that comes with your 3600. If you like this kind of content, make sure you go down and give me a thumbs up. If not, there's a thumbs down button. There's that comment section. I'll go through them every weekend on my live stream here Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time in the U.S. And if you really like this kind of content, make sure you go down and hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell on that way you're notified next time I file a video or I go live here on YouTube. And also, if you're on Instagram or Twitter, you'd like to come over and follow me. The links will be in the description for them as well. And with all that being said, you all have a good day. And I'll see you in the next video or live stream.